Are you thirsty? Well, what if I told you that this bag of clay might hold the key to clean drinking water in many parts of the world? Let's meet an engineer who is making that happen. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. My name is Emmanuel. And my name is Satine. And these, these are, are the rocks of the, of the day. day. Did you know that this rock is actually smaller than sand? This rock has a lot of different colors, white, green, light green, and pink. I wondered, what is this used for? Is it used for a paste? Because it kind of looks like a paste. I have three things to wonder. First is, how old is it? Second is, how can this relate to that? And third is, where does it come from? Hey, Ethan, can you tell us all about these rocks? Thanks, hot team and Emmanuel, for introducing this stuff to all of us. Now, this one is definitely a rock, but this just looks like a bag of clay. Well, that's because that's what it is. This is a bag of clay, and clay is a real mineral. And just as Emmanuel noticed, the tiny bits of clay are even finer than sand, super tiny. Now, hot team wondered why we have two things today and how they relate to each other. To answer that, we're going to start with the rock. Now, you've seen this one before, all the way back in episode number four. This rock, with all its beautiful colors, is called granite. Granite. And it's the most common rock in the continents. You can find it all over the place. Now, this granite is from the coast of Maine, and it's over 100 million years old. Now, it turns out that if you take that granite and expose it to the air and the rain for a long, long time, it will start to break down through a process called weathering. Now, we talked about super intense weathering back in episode 40. With normal weathering, the granite will slowly crumble apart and slowly change into something else. And that something else is called clay. This stuff, in fact, this stuff is a type of clay called kaolinite. And it's one of the most common things you can find in soils around the world. Clay also has some special, some might say even magical properties. Now, I'd like to visit an engineer friend of mine who is exploring how those magical properties might be used to provide one of the most important things of all, and that is access to clean drinking water all across the world. Hey, Ali, it's great to see you. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on Every Rock Has a Story. Everybody, we're with Ali Salifu. Ali is a professor in the Department of Engineering here at Boston College, and Ali, we brought this clay from the studio. I know you gave me this clay, and yeah. we heard that you're working on clay in your engineering laboratory. Can you show us what you're doing in there? Do you want to find out more? I do want to find let's out more. Let's go see. All right, let's do it. Thanks for taking Dude. us. All right, so Ali, what got you interested in becoming an engineer in the first place? Yeah, growing up, when I was a kid growing up in Ghana, I had an interest in cars. Cars? So, yes, yeah, so oh. I would find used aluminum cans and use them to make cars. And I was very popular in the neighborhood among the kids because of the cars, nice, beautiful cars that are made. That's a riot. So, yeah. so that sort of gave you your engineering spirit. But yes. This is called Every Rock Has a Story. And I'm yeah. thrilled we have an engineer here. Mm -hmm. But what does being an engineer have to do with the clay that we brought? So the, the design and making mindset that I had as a kid uh, motivated me to look around what we had in our environment, like the clay that you're holding in your hands and how we can use that to make something like a water filter made out of this clay that can turn contaminated dirty waters into clean water for communities that do not have access to clean water. So wait a second, this is from Ghana? This is from Ghana. So this yeah. is clay from Ghana? Yes. And you're saying that you are discovering ways to use clay to make water filters for clean water? Yes. That's really cool. So Ethan, welcome to my water filter factory. <laughs> the filter Factory, I love it. Factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see. How do you do it? Ethan, you've got to see this. 
So what is it? This is a, a mixer. It looks like a kitchen mixer, like a kitchen That's aid. making that, a cake at home? That's a cake mixer that we use for this. And then we start by mixing the clay and sawdust. Sawdust? Sawdust. So wait, so in there right now, I can see some whiter stuff, but there's yeah. something kind of brownish too? That's the sawdust. Sawdust? Yes. That's so weird. Okay. Add some water. Add water, yeah. So just like you're making a cake. Exactly. That's so funny. Then after that, we have to shape it. Using shape this mold, it. we have to put it into a nice pot-like shape. And this is where we put the clay and sawdust when water mix in there. Down the bottom. Yes. And then we press it down to form the bucket-like shapes that you see over there. Got it. Then after we, we finish shaping it, yeah. we dry it for a few days to a week. And then we put it in this hot oven. I thought this might be a furnace. Oh, and there's one in there right now. Yes. So yeah, this does look like a, a kiln, like it's a, a potter's kiln. kiln. Exactly, yes. Got it. So we put it in there, and then we turn the temperature up to about 1,700 Fahrenheit. 1,700 Fahrenheit? Very hot. You guys, that's hot. Very hot, yes. Yeah. And that will burn the sawdust off, leaving behind those uh, tiny holes. That will allow the water to filter through. I get it. And then it will also cause the clay particles to bond together. But the sawdust literally, literally gets burned away uh, yes. leaves behind those teeny the tiny little tiny holes. holes yes. So once you're done uh, firing one of these pots, how, how do you know it works? So that's another fun part, Ethan. This is the station where we test that. The first thing we do is to know how much water is coming out. So the dirty water goes in the top. Yes. And then what's dripping out the bottom, that's the clean water. Yes. And so you're measuring how fast it's going through yeah, right That's now. going through, yes. Okay. You want to know how much is the flow rate. This is what we call the flow rate. Okay. And we want it to be something around two liters per hour. Two liters per hour. So if you do this for five hours or eight, 10 hours, you can get about 20 liters of water, which is enough for a family or a household okay. of three. Okay, for a typical day of, typical of day. water use. Exactly. Yeah. Can you speed it up? Like, why not? Why not try to find a way to make it make it faster? Maybe make the holes bigger. Oh, when we make the holes bigger, then we will have a lot of dirty stuff going through, and naughty things going through that will not make the water clean. I get. So it. we have to balance the flow speed with the efficiency of the filtration. How does the filter work? Like, I guess what's special about this clay that makes it useful in these filters. Okay, so what, some of the chemicals that we've identified that are uh, very good for keeping the water clean are alumina. Alumina attracts viruses mm -hmm. and also um, ion oxide, titanium dioxide. All these are known to attract viruses and also kill bacteria. Hmm. So we were looking for a kind of clay that have these chemicals in it. And looking around, we saw that kaolin has these components, these chemicals in them. And if you look at a lot of communities around the world, they have a lot of kaolin deposits. So we're thinking about how can we use what is locally available to make a product like these water filters to help people in the community to get clean drinking water. I guess that's my next question. What next? Where does the project go? Yeah, so Ethan, one of the things that came to mind when I started this project was how can I use my knowledge of engineering to make the world a better place? So I'm thinking about uh, people uh, around where I grew up in Ghana that didn't have, uh, that do not have access to clean drinking water from municipal water supplies and rely on other types of sources of water. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. And I'm also looking at people around the globe that do not have access to water. How can we implement these type of um, filters that are easy to make in homes? to ensure that households get clean drinking water. I see. You're prototyping these here, but it's not like you're going to go bring a whole bunch of filters that you made. Yes. I think your whole idea is you'll bring the recipe. Yes. And they can make their own filters. They can make their right? own filters. That, that is so cool. That's the whole idea. Ali, this has been so amazing to hear your story. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you for, for having me. Part yes. of this episode sure. of Every Rock Has a Story. Yeah. You guys will see you back in the studio. What incredible work that Ali's doing in his engineering lab. He's really finding a way to put that clay to good use. 
Now, let's bring Hatim and Emmanuel into the studio to see what they think. Hey, you guys. So, now that you've seen what Ali is doing with that clay, what do you think? That is very cool. To be able to make, like, to be able to make something that can provide for the whole entire world, I think that is, like, very awesome. Yeah, it sure is awesome. What about you, Emmanuel? I feel like this is very necessary because if you have a standard pottery set, some uh, a, a saw, some wood, and a, a oven, you can make it at home. Yeah, I think that's such an important part of what Ali's doing here. He wants to give people the recipe so they can make real water filters right there in their homes and communities with the clay and other ingredients they can find right outside their door. So I got another question. If you guys could meet Ali in his lab and ask him one question, what would you ask? Can I help you make one pot? Oh, so you want to help him in his lab. What about you, Emmanuel? I have an idea. What if you make an iron masking over it and a, a space at the bottom for the water? So instead of holding it for an hour to get clean water, you can just put the, the masking over it and then the, um, the pot is stuck in there. So you can pour some dirty water in there and it filters the water at the bottom. You guys are starting to sound a lot like engineers. Do you think you might want to be an engineer? I want to be a soccer player. A soccer player? A soccer player and an engineer. Maybe I want to be an engineer. Maybe. I want to just be a YouTuber. Okay. Well, I tell you what. You guys can be athletes and scientists and even YouTubers if you want. Remember Nicole from episode 79? She was an athlete and a scientist. Ali is an engineer and a rock guy. And I'm a scientist and I guess I'm a YouTuber too. So if you follow those dreams, any of that is possible. Emmanuel, Hatim, it's been great to have you in this episode. Bye! In this episode, we saw how a common mineral like clay can be part of the solution to one of the world's most pressing issues, and that's getting clean drinking water to all people. Now, maybe where you live, water is easy to get, and it's always clean. Maybe you need to buy one of those expensive water filters to make sure it's clean. Or maybe where you live, getting water is a daily chore and you feel nervous that the water is ever safe to drink. No matter who you are, no matter where you live, everyone needs water. It's scientists and engineers like Ali that can empower all people with the knowledge they will need to create that clean water for themselves, where they need it and when they need it. In our last episode, we heard how clay can be used to make bricks to build homes and shelter and yet how that same brick-making process can make people sick in some parts of the world. Sometimes the same thing, the same mineral, can tell both happy stories and sad stories. It's important for us to know both kinds of stories because if we're clever, we can create the solutions and fix those problems. And that's what an engineer like Ali can do. I want to thank Ali Emmanuel and Hatim for bringing their clever ideas to this episode. I wonder what ideas you have. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I feel like maybe this could make an even bigger impact on the community than those uh, aluminum cars you made out of the cans yes. back when you were a kid. I think this might so. be just even a little bit more significant. Exactly, yeah. Can you guys hear that? Let's see what we can do. It's pretty loud. My favorite so, mineral is ice. Ice? That is in episode 78? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a rock. It is uh, ice. No, ice is, is a rock. rock. Ice is a rock. It's totally a rock. Because uh, it's natural. Because rocks it, are made from minerals. Rock, rock is natural. It, uh, rock is crystallized, and also rock can have um, different shapes of form, not always in one form. Nice, you guys. Give me a, hit this bump. So technically, water can count.